intelligence for enterprise organizations. And this will be presented by Mr. Radi Alitawi, Vice President and Head of Operations for Huan Cybertech Tipco. As I welcome Roddy on board and invite him to kickstart the webinar, let me share a little bit more about your presenter. Mr. Alitawi has more than two decades of IT experience, managing a vast array of ICT and digital transformation software solutions for brands such as Connexon Systems, Macy's, FIS, Ericsson, Tipco, and Bahuan Cybertech. 18 years of his career, Roddy has led innovation and transformation across various organizations using TIPCO as the core technology for integration, enterprise architecture, management of big data platform development, and various customer-centric and analytic solutions. Currently, Roddy is a technology leader and head of operations for Bahuan Cybertech and TIPCO in the Middle East and North Africa. As the Vice President, he partners with CXO level leaders in large organizations to provide consulting on business innovation, advice on emerging technology, and support with regards to digital transformation strategy and implementation. Using his diverse expertise, deep knowledge, and extensive competencies in the design and implementation of TIPCO Connected Intelligence, including API management, ESP architecting, microservices, data management, cloud technology, advanced analytics, and IoT solutions for various regional customers. Roddy, it is our absolute pleasure to have you with us today, and we look forward to your webinar. Just a little housekeeping before we hand over to Mr. Alitawi. The webinar will be approximately 45 minutes to an hour. If you have any questions during the presentation, please do not hesitate to put the question in your Zoom box control panel below. As the moderator, I will certainly bring them up at the end of the session during our Q&A session. I kindly request you to all keep your microphones muted while the session is in progress to avoid any background noise and invite you to enjoy the session. Ladies and gentlemen, now it is time to turn data into innovation with connected intelligence. Over to you, Roddy. Hello, everyone. Uh, hopefully, everybody having a great day. Thank you, L'Oreal, for this uh, flattering introduction. I appreciate it. Um, I uh, thank you everybody for uh, taking the time and uh, joining us uh, today uh, for this uh, webinar and uh, hoping to cover uh, areas uh, that is of concern uh, for all of us uh, attending this, uh, this session. Uh, obviously, the massive change of, of, uh, and the quantity of speed and data spurred major wave of all kinds of initiatives from transformation or transforming enterprise the way they deal with their, their business with their data. Uh, digital transformation uh, initiatives at its full swing uh, in the past several years, where enterprise leaders looking for data as the prime or the primary fuel uh, to drive uh, innovation. Uh, obviously, sustaining data innovation often uh, poses a unique uh, set of challenges that we've seen over the years working with so many of these uh, you know, industry leaders. Um, and helping them uh, overcome those uh, challenges. Um, at BCT TIPCO, we repeated, repeatedly ask ourselves this uh, critical question over and over, and how do we maintain uh, that pace of uh, ideas, collaboration, uh, market uh, impact as the evolution of technologies accelerates? Uh, it's all obviously about building uh, and sustaining uh, the innovation uh, momentum. It's about using data uh, to lead uh, to the next uh, transformative uh, initiatives and breakthrough uh, for each uh, of those organizations that we're working with. So with that, uh, let's begin. Uh, um, I think um, a couple of slides will go through uh, on the uh, legality and disclaimers. Uh, I'm sure everybody read every word in that slide. Um, BCT or Bahawan Cybertech, um, is obviously a uh, digital uh, leader, have been providing digital solutions and transformation projects for a large number of uh, customers across the globe, focusing on areas such as predictive analytics, uh, digital experience, uh, digital supply chain management, uh, has been delivering across uh, those solutions across the globe, North America, and Middle East, uh, Africa, Asia, uh, and so on and so forth. BCT is obviously is being trusted by uh, so many of those uh, large customers. We talk about over a thousand uh, large customers, uh, including some of the five, uh, Fortune 500 companies. 
Um, when it comes to TIPCO, uh, TIPCO is uh, very well known, obviously a global leader in the integration in the data management as well as in the data science space. Uh, based in uh, Silicon Valley, right, uh, has built in the last uh, several years, uh, uh, yani, uh, lead capabilities in the data management and the data science space. So the, what we call today is the connected intelligence offering from TIPCO is really sitting on top of these three uh, pillars, being able to connect seamlessly any application device or data source within your ecosystem, within your enterprise, uh, being able to unify intelligently uh, for better access, uh, trust, and control of your data. And uh, finally, uh, to be able to confidently predict uh, the, with real-time data uh, and make the right decision uh, for the next uh, opportunity that uh, lies ahead for your business. So TIPCO Connected Intelligence is really laying the foundation uh, for digital innovation to fuel this uh, modern data-centric uh, enterprise. Obviously, uh, data being the transformative energy of this modern enterprise, uh, when organizations uh, tap into the power of their data, they are poised to innovate, collaborate, and grow, obviously, uh, finding new revenue streams and finding ways to do uh, what they do uh, best in a, in a better way. And uh, typical connected intelligence really unlocks the value of that real-time data for making a smarter and uh, faster decision. So moving on, uh, this slide really show you the snippet of, um, you know, some of the key customers we're working with. Um, primarily in this region, obviously we are operating out of the Dubai office covering the MENA region, Middle East, North Africa, as well as the operation in uh, Pakistan and, and India. Um, so over, over the last 10, 15 years, we have uh, many different uh, customers adopting different bits and pieces of the platform that we're going to talk about, obviously tackling different uh, problems and growing over time to the full spectrum of capabilities that we were uh, talking about here. Um, globally, there's over 10,000 customers, uh, 10,000 customers using uh, yani the capabilities of this platform at different different capacities, um, and that uh, allowing allowing these customers obviously to adapt to act in the uh, moment of uh, business moments kind of thing, but also the flexibility of this uh, platform um, allows us to go and tackle all kinds of problems across all verticals. So when you look at this this list of customers, the leaders in oil and gas, the leaders in telecom, the leaders in financial services, the leaders in uh, transportation logistics, regionally and globally, are uh, heavily relying on, on this uh, platform that we're gonna hopefully have the time today to go on a, a, a much deeper yani, um, uh, exploration of what those capabilities are and how it all comes together. So, um, you know, industry leaders obviously uh, have been uh, uh, showing their uh, any uh, uh, understanding of these capabilities and uh, positioning TIPCO in the these in the last just in the last 12 months or so we see TIPCO been placed in those uh, magic quadrants in the leader uh, top you know right uh, top corner in all these magic quadrants across the board and uh, that's a that's a testament to be honest with you it depends on how you really appreciate or see these uh, analyst report but if you look at the Gartner reports Forster reports and, and others um, and you see the kinds of uh, criteria that they've been uh, placing TIPCO in the leader partners. It's very, very impressive, right? Um, and there is a reason for this. It's really about the differentiation that TIPCO brings, brings to the place, it brings to their customers in terms of being able to not only just do the normal kinds of uh, implementation and kinds of projects, but also take it down to the, to the edge, right? So we're talking about differentiating strengths uh, recognized by these leaders. One is the uh, edge analytics and streaming. This is a very unique value proposition from TIPCO where uh, from edge integration using the TIPCO data science to TIPCO streaming to open uh, source project logo to execution deep learning of model uh, uh, driven on devices rather than waiting to collect uh, uh, data from all sources put it in a centralized uh, location or a, a centralized uh, data lake before we can actually take the uh, next step of uh, uh, mining this data and applying these data models. You're actually now move, able to move uh, the, those uh, data science models and algorithms and execute those immediately 
uh, on those edge uh, devices. Uh, very unique and it's powerful uh, capabilities that typical connected intelligence platform bring to the market. Openness. This platform is obviously well known. It has been serving across the, the board as the connecting tissue of the enterprise for so many different customers globally. And as such, it has the bells and whistles to be able to integrate and interoperate uh, with any complex environment you may have, including legacy uh, systems, including all the new uh, cloud versus on-prem or hybrid deployment uh, that you may have within your organization. Be, be, being able to bring all this together and work in, uh, in concert and providing the business value that you're looking for from the investment that you made uh, across the board. The third uh, category that's placing TIPCO ahead of the pack is the end-to-end -end platform. So a lot of our competition or competition in the marketplace today, they bring yeah, a certain uh, strength in one area or the other. If you look at the pipeline of, of uh, data management, if you look at it as a manufacturer on assembly line, right? There is a data or a data op or a data manufacturing pipeline. And if you look at it from the creation all the way to consumption, and everything in between, including data management and data preparation, data science. Typical connected intelligence really provides you with the tools, with the ease of use and the reducing complexity across all these different um, steps. So that end-to-end -end experience uh, and is, is built obviously on two core uh, foundations. One is from a business intelligence and the uh, heritage that Typical has with Spotfire in the data visualization and advanced uh, data analytics, but also with the strength that TIPCO has been uh, known for for so many years on the enterprise class uh, and scale uh, type of deployment when it comes to the integration and infrastructure uh, components such as, you know, the TIPCO Business Works and uh, Flogos and TIPCO Mastery and all these other components that falls under the uh, integration uh, uh, umbrella. So talking about data innovation, um, let's start from the top. You know, TIPCO has been obviously partnering with NASA and other research institutions globally. Uh, some of the, I thought this slide would actually kind of trigger our curiosity and, and uh, kind of set the stage of what kind of impact of some of these projects uh, are yielding for, for humanity, not just specifically for profit. So when you look at data uh, being the fuel of innovation, uh, not only for, uh, pro uh, to produce business value, which is great for everybody, that's what everybody wants, but also at the same time, or how to make this world that we live in in a better place, right? Um, uh, no higher uh, goal that we can aim for of, from what we do on the day in, day out. So from creating modern uh, evidence-based healthcare systems, for example, uh, to building sustainable energy efficient uh, cities when it comes to uh, things like, uh, you know, smart cities, um, you know, analysis and use of massive amount of data will have the potential to generate enormous social and economic value uh, to all of us. So a couple of projects, I'll highlight those, uh, you know, DARPA in the U.S. is working on this uh, neat project. It's called the uh, AtmoSense, right? Being, being able to sense the movement and activities in the ion uh, sphere layer, which is about uh, 70 kilometers above uh, Earth's surface. Uh, in with the intention to be able to help us all on the on the on the ground in terms of uh, detecting and predicting uh, catastrophic uh, uh, seismic events such as you know earthquakes and uh, volcanic eruptions and things of that nature a lot of data crunching takes place and uh, collecting data from all kinds of uh, sources to be able to uh, lead to a much better prediction uh, algorithms uh, of such uh, events right Another interesting project, which kind of kind of brings me back, uh, brings back memory. Uh, growing up in Jordan, you know, uh, during my high school years, I was uh, working uh, with some groups coming out uh, from the outside the country to do some excavation work uh, in a country rich of archaeological sites, uh, historical sites, uh, ancient uh, sites, um, and with the hope to find some uh, obviously archaeological artifacts. Um, you know, and I know how tedious and uh, labor intensive that work is. You know, imagine, you know, uh, digging in the ground all day with a spatula and a toothbrush, right? Uh, and, and nowadays with, uh, with uh, this, uh, uh, with this, uh, with this data uh, revolution, if you will, data evolution, 
Um, we are talking about the you know, University of Cambridge uh, with the University of Ghent in Belgium being able to map a whole city that's completely uh, underground, right, or under the surface of the ground, using uh, yeah, obviously radar images that can penetrate to a certain depth uh, the ground surface. So there's a city uh, north of Rome, about 30 miles north of Rome now, completely mapped, you know, the walls, the city, the, 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 the different facilities, um, uh, being able to actually see the whole layout uh, without actually digging, uh, uh, digging and, and unearthing all those, uh, all those artifacts. So being able to do it in, in, in minutes or days or hours, as opposed to going and physically do it in the old ways, right, of, uh, uh, you know, spending years and years in the hope of finding something, and 90% of the cases you don't find anything, right? This is massive testament for where the technology is, is taking us to and the data uh, innovation and using data and using these kinds of capabilities to make our life, uh, you know, better. There's a lot of examples here. We're happy for those who are interested to share more details on each one of them. But now take it a step further. How, does, how, how do we, from a BCT and from a TIPCO perspective, yani how, how can we help? So if we bring it down to the ground uh, level, obviously everybody's consumed with uh, COVID-19 spread and this whole pandemic that's, uh, you know, uh, taking all of us uh, uh, in surprise kind of thing. Um, and being able to uh, create uh, solutions, right? Uh, built on data innovation to allow us to play a critical role in helping authorities to track and flatten the curve of, uh, of infection. So uh, we are been, we're working here with a number of different uh, agencies and authorities and, and uh, partners and customers uh, building different capabilities uh, for different uh, use cases. So a lot of uh, customers nowadays obviously adopted certain ways to, for example, real-time tracking of cases, uh, crowd management, uh, analysis of uh, outbreak hotspots, uh, uh, medical equipment and hospital bed uh, availability in terms of health resources availability within the uh, yani, uh, uh, close proximity of those patients who were diagnosed with, with, uh, with the infection. So being able to really take all this data, stream it, analyze it, and being able to provide the uh, authority and the agencies and the other, again, the folks uh, who are in the front line of combating this uh, pandemic um, is a testament again of what, how much we could do uh, with data to make sure that we're all, we come on top at the end of this, of this battle. Uh, companies like, uh, you know, there's a company in India, uh, I was reading about it, you know, just uh, last week, uh, Porto Technology Information Limited in India, using neural network to create molecules that can actually inhibit the spread of the coronavirus in the person who's been uh, diagnosed with that, right? And, uh, you know, the automatic detection of uh, COVID-19 uh, cases. So in Mount uh, Sinai, for example, uh, in New York, they were overwhelmed, if you all remember, you know, a few weeks back with the cases and the spread of uh, infection in New York. So these guys, the data scientists working and the research working for that uh, hospital, they came together and they found ways to uh, automatically uh, read, in, read in those CT scans and uh, with the history of those uh, patients, you know, being subjected to these kinds of uh, tests, immediately uh, detect uh, with the accuracy of a human uh, radiologist, detect of this whether this person is infected or not, right? So obviously, creating a lot of efficiencies in the diagnosis uh, uh, process. There's all kinds of examples. Uh, we're actually working with a company in in uh, in Florida uh, to help uh, you know figure out the uh, the the impact on also the those hotspots of uh, infection based on the testing analysis of waste uh, wastewater, right? Um, so, and, and all of that depends on uh, data capabilities, being able to analyze, being able to, uh, again, um, uh, yani apply all these different uh, algorithms uh, to allow them to uh, yani detect uh, these, these, the presence of all these signals that can lead to a better detection, better understanding of the nature of this thing. So, uh, TIPCO uh, has put this uh, uh, hub, if you will, information hub, you can, uh, log into it, it's available to everybody. So if you go to tipco.com COVID-19 or slash COVID-19, you'll be able to see all this. I'm just taking a few uh, screenshots. 
Um, and uh, this is really with the goal to understand the outbreak uh, real time uh, at the community level, right? So you'll be able to actually zoom down and uh, for that specific region you're interested in, and it gives you all the details of, you know, the infection, uh, the cases that's being reported, uh, hospital facilities, the um, inventory or the stock of key equipments, ventilators, and uh, you know uh, what's available in that hospital that you could still uh, tap into for new new cases. So uh, the idea here is really to again, uh, uh, this is a, a free service, right? It's available. You can actually download this, uh, customize it to your need uh, based on your. Yani, uh, priorities, if you need to specifically add additional models uh, or modules, take additional modules and things like that, yeah, you, you're welcome to do that. It's, it's available on the typical community. So the next slide actually shows you uh, some of these uh, key capabilities that's available to you uh, immediately. Obviously, looking at the pattern of spread, looking at the growth trajectories, uh, looking at the efficiency of the uh, measures that those governments have been uh, enforcing. So obviously we've all been subjected to this lockdown um, yani, uh, uh, for the last few months. Some of them have been effective, some of them have not been so effective. It depends on, on all these different, different factors. So this tools allows you to really measure uh, those uh, procedures that the non-pharmaceutical procedures that the government has taken in reducing the number of uh, cases and that goes across number of infections, number of deaths, and uh, also uh, the number of uh, recovery uh, cases. One key uh, uh, yani capabilities here that you will see is again, the healthcare resources available to you, right? And uh, being able to uh, yani, uh, find the closest uh, place uh, to go to in case of yani emergency, in case of uh, somebody has been diagnosed or suspected uh, to be uh, having this, uh, this virus. So the whole uh, hospital availability around you through a map, obviously there's a lot of uh, geoanalytics uh, happening in the background. It gives you a center point and based on a radius, you know, in terms of what's the easiest path for you to take, uh, optimize routing and all these things. Uh, there's a lot of data science actually uh, in there uh, to allow it to make it uh, uh, beneficial for everybody to use. In the next slide, I'm going to show you what BCT has been uh, spending a, a good amount of time in the last few months to bring to uh, the industry, right, a very unique offering, if you will, uh, in combining a lot of these features to, with the purpose or with the objective to make the workplace uh, uh, safer for employees and also for uh, customers. So, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's, a, there's an offering called, obviously it's called the DT SmartWorks 360, as you see on the slide. Um, the, 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 the companies, you know, have been forced to now adopt or um, adapt their methods and adapt their uh, way of managing uh, their staff, their spaces, their facilities to one, comply obviously with the regulations and the new, uh, any uh, regulations that we get from the government, but also to again ensure and guarantee the safety and, and well being of employees and customers who are frequent in those facilities. This also solutions is now being looked at and, and used on a couple of uh, uh, you know, retail stores and malls. And so, any place that, that is frequented by large crowds. Uh, this solution will fit right in, in automating a lot of these uh, activities that uh, guarantee or ensure safety of everybody uh, within that space. So the idea here is um, the idea here is really that digital, it's a SmartWorks 360 is a digital application suite that facilitates the 360 degree management of a new workplace and workforce uh, dynamics. Right. Um, four key features. I'm sorry. Um, I'll go back to the previous slide. Four key features here is really uh, being able to ensure uh, real time and, and safe distancing between people. Uh, again, being able to uh, check temperatures automatically, obviously through thermal cameras and all that, being able to check the temperature of folks who are uh, within the, you know, that facility, right? And creating case management to handle the case if certain you know, individuals been um, identified to have high fever or high, high temperature. Then also being able to do contact tracing for any individuals who have been suspected having the case or been diagnosed with the case, 
uh, going back and helping authorities to trace who, who, are, who came in close contact with those individuals through obviously different devices, wearables, and things like that. All these features are available uh, in this uh, offering. As well as a key, a key differentiator also um, feature set here added in this solution or this package is really that experience and self-reporting uh, feedback. Hopefully we're all responsible citizens and we look for ways to contribute to the uh, good cause that all of us are, are dealing with here, which is com combat this disease. Uh, there is a way with the uh, drop thought from uh, BCT. It's a very well-rounded uh, customer experience uh, management system uh, and they include a lot of features for, for uh, feedback uh, and keeping everybody in, in, informed, whoever is responsible or have a, play, a, play, have a place or have a role to play in the, in the process of uh, managing uh, COVID and COVID-19 use cases uh, will be informed through the drop thought um, uh, feedback. So the, I, I want to highlight one thing here before I move to the next slide is the, 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 you know, the ability that we were able to put all this together, uh, formalize it, and, and, uh, and put it in a package that you can easily download and use and build and customize further, right, or use as is uh, in a very short period of time. That's, uh, you know, that's uh, something that we're very proud of. Underneath this is really the connected intelligence platform that we're talking about is the drop thought uh, from BCT that makes this uh, possible. In a very short, in a few weeks, we were able to bring this to life and deploy it on a few sites that is actually uh, helping again in the fight of, uh, in the fight of uh, COVID. The next slide is really now, we're gonna bring it down to the main topic or the main subject, which is really data and data innovation in the enterprise. So uh, the next slide um, talks about these key areas that's driving a lot of uh, innovation for, our, you know, for all of our customers. Obviously customer experience, customer intimacy, every organization uh, trying to get to the point where uh, their customers are, you know, uh, customer affinity is there, uh, aligning with their services and their, their products uh, with the customer need and customer expectation. Um, and also the, to build that trust, huh? they build trust, deliver greater value, uh, develop long-term sustainable uh, loyalty with those customers. At the crux of all this is data, right? Being able to use the data to see how we could uh, enhance our uh, customer experience uh, is, is a key uh, differentiator across the board. Obviously operational excellence, optimization of our uh, operation. Again, uh, being able to utilize data-driven insights and decision-making allows digital leaders to optimize every point uh, along their value chain, right? Uh, this is something that, you know, from an operation expenses, from, a, from an, uh, you know, cost uh, reduction, but also from uh, time to market and being able to, uh, again, uh, you know, capitalize on opportunities in a very on a timely fashion is, a, is, is also you know, a key differentiator for the things that we do with data when it comes to the connected intelligence uh, implementations. Business reinvention, the last one there, business reinvention and creating uh, new uh, revenue streams. Uh, a lot of our customers, obviously, especially in the old, you know, the brick and mortar type of uh, operations, you know, whether it's telco or retail or whatever, they're looking for ways to obviously capitalize on the data and see how they can monetize and also help them with creating new uh, revenue stream. And data, data by itself, obviously, on its own, um, uh, does not give you that if you don't have the right tools and the right uh, ways to actually extract those business nuggets from those intelligence from the data to be able to create uh, a new business opportunities for you. Okay, now if, if data, the data project, data-driven enterprise and the transformation is, is so great, right? And it's delivering all these great, great values. Why isn't everybody doing it, right? <laughs> um, you know, uh, obviously uh, complexity. You know, complexity is the short answer to that. Complexity because data is, is lying, you know, in all these uh, um, fragmented across the enterprise, uh, uh, desperate data, desperate data across all these different systems, uh, inconsistent data, uh, and so on and so forth. And the complexity of actually bringing all that together uh, to extract that value 
it's not an easy thing to do, right? And that's where uh, BCT, that's where TIPCO uh, comes into, into play. Uh, but before, before I get into the, 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 the spe specific features, uh, no, we'll go to the next slide. Uh, there is a, a lot of work that's been done by uh, researchers, right? And the foresters have published this recently, it's called the Serious Decision uh, Data-Driven uh, Operation or Operating Model to help kind of people, whether it's you know, chief architects, enterprise architects, uh, CIOs, and, and uh, the leaders in their organization to put kind of help them put their bearing around uh, what it means for my organization at this level to be a data-driven or data-centric uh, organization. So you're talking about this, this uh, uh, operating model, which really focus on three key areas, insights requirements, uh, data management, and, and team enablement. Um, what I, wanna, I don't want to dwell too much on this one, but uh, there's a lot of details here, but I'll go to the next slide because it really maps beautifully with the, the, uh, yani the offering that we bring to the table here uh, through the TIPCO stack or through the TIPCO connected intelligence uh, stack, right? So if you look at this, it's all about you know, uh, being able to uh, connect everything in your uh, ecosystem. Um, uh, it's a very powerful set of tools, interlink capabilities from uh, connectivity to unification or unifying of your data to the data science and uh, to be able to predict uh, uh, yani, um, based on the data that you have flowing in your metro. So every, in my judgment, my humble uh, experience, right, as well as the experience of um, these analysts, it all leads to the fact that every modern enterprise needs, uh, needs this formula uh, to succeed, uh, again, to being able to tap into that real-time data, changing the nature of, of the business in every industry and every company. So this is something in one shape or form uh, is, is what all these uh, large organizations are looking to, to get to the point where they become a complete learning uh, enterprise and developing and evolving with every business event that they capture within their uh, network, they're becoming a, a more efficient, um, uh, yani, uh, and more uh, productive, uh, more efficient uh, enterprise in the way they do business. In the next slide, we'll, we'll dive closer or deeper into what this means, right? From an offering standpoint. Uh, again, the first thing is connect uh, through obviously the integration. Uh, data holds 100% uh, of the value um, uh, and opportunities. And the ability to access and activate, right? To access and activate that data uh, in context uh, for people, processes, and systems unlocks the business value. Um, with the typical hybrid uh, integration, uh, you know, it's obviously it's been, it's been around, it's been evolved, it's been uh, enhanced uh, for so many years now. It's been the lead, uh, leading the, the pack in terms of providing all the integration uh, use cases for small, big, or uh, enterprises uh, across all verticals. In the Unify space, this is where data management, master data management, uh, data virtualization capabilities all come together, right? And this is really, if you're looking at the customer experience in previous slide, we were talking about if you want to reimagine customer experience and uh, customer intimacy with your organization, right? Uh, providing that operation and excellence. Uh, I'm not sure I'm getting a lot of pop ups here. Uh, sorry. Okay. So, to be able to do this, uh, you know, uh, intelligently, uh, you need to deal with all kinds of data. Uh, whether it's uh, metadata, reference data, master data, streaming data, transactional data, all these uh, different types uh, of data, different velocity, different volumes, right? Being able to deal with it in one uh, complete uh, platform. That's really the objective of this Unify uh, offering from uh, the Connected Intelligence platform from TIPCO. Then finally, the predict. This is where I was talking about visual analytics, data science, as well as uh, streaming analytics. So we'll go to the next slide and we see the loop of this innovation that, <clears throat> that we're trying to obviously provide to our customer through this capability. First, data, right? Again, data on its own is dumb. It it's doesn't tell you anything. <clears throat> Nonetheless, it is the fuel of, of uh, the innovation that we can uh, you know, tap into. So from data to insight to actions to learning, this is really the loop that 
uh, or the nirvana, if you will, state that uh, every chief executive uh, tried to get their uh, organization or their business uh, to be able to do this, right? So obviously, having a, we can we can uh, we can be able to do all this with very little uh, reliance on on IT as as resources. You know, uh, this is where that you know the strength of of uh, a platform. Uh, coming together, basically democratizing, but also involving everybody who's in that uh, enterprise to pitch in and do their part in, in adopting uh, uh, this type of uh, yeah, method, this type of architecture for these, uh, for these companies. Uh, <clears throat> so the first, obviously data, you know, this is where simply, uh, or simplifying data access, wrangling and exploration, as you would expect, uh, being able to empower everyone and every system uh, with the data-driven insights uh, and prediction on the uh, insight side. On the action, which is really about automation and act in real time. And this action could be in all kinds of uh, forms and, and, and shapes, right? Uh, not only just to, you know, um, we're not talking about just sending notifications and alerts and things like that to folks. We're talking about driving a complete uh, workflows, uh, case management, and, uh, yeah, you know, taking actually invoking some, uh, um, artificial intelligence or machine learning models and things like that, to be able to do all this uh, automatically with very little interference, but with a complete supervision and complete governance uh, around that is in place as well. Finally, the learning bit, uh, being able to learn and feedback uh, into your data, feedback into your enterprise, that's really where the, the kind of rubber meets the road and that's what differentiates uh, leaders from laggards, if you will, right? If you invest in these, uh, again, algorithmic way of doing business and building, again, business uh, uh, intelligence based on the best practices from a data science perspective, that's when you're going to uh, outshine and, and drive your business forward uh, before everybody else. So we'll take a couple examples in the next slide, see how Caesars, for example, have done a tremendous uh, uh, investment and efforts to help with their customer experience. I know this is not the right time to be in, in Vegas, but uh, if you are uh, recently in the last year or so, you probably experienced their IB, which is a customer experience um, uh, app, right? It's actually built on bits of piece, on pieces from this uh, platform. Uh, as soon as you walk in, uh, and it's, it's an app you can download and, and use on your phone. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, intelligence, if you will, to, to greet you, treat you as a, as a personalized uh, uh, guest uh, in their facility, right? Uh, basically uh, helping you with a guided uh, tour of their, uh, all the kinds of things that you can do uh, during your stay to enjoy the different uh, entertainment outlets that they have. This led to over 50% increase in non-gambling revenue for Caesar. So it's not a joke, uh, or it's not a joke in terms of the impact uh, to their business. Uh, the guts of it is being able to connect, understand who this person is who just walked into the door, being able to have a look at the history uh, with, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, you know, in terms of with, with, the, with the company, uh, the kind of uh, things that you like and you don't like, your profile and, and all these things, right? And also what's available, what inventory they have, what the events that they're managing that day, that week kind of thing. So bringing all this together and also uh, a little bit of data science in terms of preferences for you as a customer, in terms of what uh, makes you, what makes these events tick for you or for, for, for versus somebody else. If you look at the uh, next use case that I'm going to share with you, it's really about the partnership that Tipco is very proud of, and it's all over social media. You can get a lot of details over YouTube or LinkedIn, and you'll see, see all kinds of videos from uh, Lewis Hamilton to everybody in Mercedes talking about the great work that we've done with them. Uh, the uh, typical specifically tools allowing them to have this uh, performance or champion performance if you will on the track and, uh, and, and off the track. So obviously Mercedes collects and makes sense of billions of data points uh, and, and guide the F1 team to optimize uh, their performance to win championships. Over the last few years obviously they've, they've been the champion for six times uh, uh, just recently, right? Uh, <clears throat> The way uh, Tipco uh, does this, or Tipco helps uh, Mercedes, uh, uh, is really to make sense of these gigabytes of complex uh, live data uh, from their W09, uh, their car, right? 
uh, while it speeds down down the track. You're talking about everything is being censored and everything is being uh, yani, uh, measured and everything is being reported. Uh, with the visual analytics that we have, with the data science models, they worked together with their data scientists along with the typical data science. They were able to identify you know, all kinds of uh, enhanced and uh, fine-tune uh, the strategy that the driver takes around the track, uh, but also fine-tune the, the, the setup in, in the car for the next uh, race uh, kind of thing. It's uh, definitely exciting uh, details here. It's all over the place. We're happy to share with you. Please check it out. Uh, you know, when you get time, it's it's very interesting. All right. So uh, I'll skip this one for the sake of time, uh, but it's there. We'll share those slides with you, so I guess you can, can reference to some of those uh, use cases. There's obviously uh, many interesting ones. So if we dive, if we look at the again how the connected intelligence platform uh, helped these customers. Um, I want, again, the connectivity part we want to go learn. Let's move uh, directly into the data management and the data science uh, part, because that's really where, again, where the key uh, capabilities that are kind of relevant uh, specifically to the webinar uh, topic today. Uh, I know we're not going to be able to dive to a uh, you know, level where um, can answer or address uh, uh, many of you uh, attending this webinar. There are a number of different webinars that dive deeper into each one of those categories and each one of those uh, uh, areas. Um, so uh, I'm sure uh, L'Oreal will share with all of us uh, the links on how to dive deeper into this. But this is a little bit uh, high level and we'll keep it at that just to cover the, the full, uh, full ground here. Uh, so when you talk about when you talk about the uh, data uh, management from TIPCO, if you go to the previous slide, I'm sorry, the TIPCO Unify offering uh, allows organization to manage uh, diversity of data, uh, obviously in a well-governed and consistent way, uh, which includes every kind of data again, as we mentioned, metadata, reference data, uh, master data, as well as transactional uh, data, right? And uh, if you look at, you know, the type of, uh, use cases where all this data come kind of comes together, whether it's for analytics purposes, uh, whether it's for operationals or compliance. You know that's where uh, again enterprise need to make sure that the data they're real and relying on is consistent, is uh, is, um, is trusted, uh, and it's also well controlled and well secured uh, to make sure that they're making uh, their decision based on uh, something that they can trust or data that they can trust. So in the next slides, it kind of breaks it down to these three buckets, if you will, these offerings from, and the Unify is, uh, offering from TIPCO. Uh, think uh, TIPCO EDX, uh, think TIPCO uh, data virtualization, and think TIPCO uh, metadata. So bringing all these things together, that gives you the Unify uh, offering from TIPCO. Under the master data management, uh, as you would expect, this is where it's all about model-driven, implemented with your data workflows, security models, multi-domain, out of the box. You know, in, within each SIM instance, you can have multi-domain uh, master data management for the most important uh, key business objects within your uh, uh, enterprise. Um, obviously, all-in-one kind of thing, all the way from um, uh, harvesting or from ingesting uh, data, all the way to building this gold copy of your uh, business object. Uh, your customer 360, your product 360, your uh, inventory, your product uh, three, uh, you know, all these different uh, key business objects, right? Uh, uh, all of that is done uh, from a feature set standpoint in the, same, in the same platform. You don't have to go in and find a tool for data cleansing, another tool for hierarchy management, another tool for, uh, for, uh, you know, for classification of data and things like that. In with typical EBX, it's all uh, covered end of this uh, offering. Also from a data, metadata management, uh, where they talk about managing physical uh, business data policies, uh, lineage uh, of your data, all from a single tool uh, in, the same, in the same fashion. Uh, obviously, it allows you to ingest metadata from a wide variety of sources, right? Uh, including uh, there is an, um, an uh, AI, ML type of uh, uh, an engine that allows you to, as you ingest these data structures and data schemas and, and glossaries of your business and the hierarchies of uh, 
the, the models for your data. There's an AI ML that's working behind the scene to make sure that it's doing all the relationships and all the uh, you know, uh, cleaning of, of uh, those schemas to make sure that it is uh, uh, to standards, right? Uh, and then finally, uh, this uh, offering runs as a SaaS uh, offering, so it's available for everybody with a click of a button. You can actually access access it and start playing with it. Um, one unique uh, and differentiating offering in this space is uh, TIPCO's data virtualization or TIPCO DV, right? This is a very powerful and very uh, unique offering, um, which allows a lot of our customers to have this virtual data layer. So rather than waiting for the data to be pulled in and uh, stored in a, in a data store or data lake or in a, um, a centralized yani, uh, location, before you can actually leverage that data, with this virtualization layer, it allows you to access the data while it's still uh, yani, in its uh, source system. Uh, there is also the notion of logical data warehouse, uh, data as a service. There is all kinds of uh, innovative and creative way of leveraging this tool to help you know, people use the data to its fullest values very quickly without waiting for a lot of uh, integration work and a lot of uh, preparation work to allow you to access that data. <clears throat> Next slide, we'll talk about the uh, massive data management again. Uh, this is the full uh, spectrum of uh, features if you see um, you know again from modeling to uh, data quality <clears throat> managing the life uh, cycle the management of the hierarchies stewardship of the data workflows security i'm not going to read every word in the slide but you get the gist of it that it completes the uh, all the key features that you would expect from a, 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 an enterprise class uh, and a, a well uh, yani, uh, regarded the uh, offering from uh, data management and master data management uh, standpoint. Uh, in the next slide, we show you also here the, the ease of use uh, of uh, such complex system, right? Again, you need to, when you bring it to the, the people who are actually interacting with that system, you need to have a common, easy way, intuitive way for them to leverage the, the complex uh, features in, in the system in a very uh, uh, easy manner, right? So in this case, uh, the studio or the team studio that sits on top of the typical uh, Unify data management or the master data management in this case is uh, one uh, studio that basically covers the need of all uh, users, whether you are a business user, uh, data stewards, uh, or a developer or an analyst, um, you can uh, use the same interface. That uh, same interface obviously is available on on, uh, on a you know, portal, on a website, or on even your mobile devices, uh, you can actually interact, uh, quickly access the data, work through in a collaborative uh, fashion with the rest of the players to make sure that you're managing, you're governing, uh, and you're also consuming uh, their, the data in, a, in this one unified uh, solution. Um, <clears throat> I think we touched uh, a little bit on that uh, metadata uh, uh, aspect of it, but uh, really it's, it's again, it's a one-stop shop, a single solution to discover, uh, to harvest, and to manage uh, metadata from all meta metadata sources, right? And it also helps you to improve data governance and, and compliance. Um, it also provides you with a self-service and a data catalog for your enterprise. A lot of us in, 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 uh, in these uh, companies we see, you know, um, they, are, uh, yeah, they are at the mercy of those uh, data stewards or data uh, owners, if you will, to find out what uh, we have within the enterprise to help me with my business use case, to help me with my line of business uh, uh, to uh, uh, yani make sure that what I'm doing is based on a collective view of what's available to me within my organization. So having access to the ability to be able to search, search and browse in this case for data assets uh, within your organizations, to look at the catalog and understand, you know, what, you know, my product looks like uh, from a data standpoint, what my customer looks like from a data standpoint, what my, you know, key, the, those business objects that's captured and managed through metadata uh, layer. It's critical for me to make the right decision on how I want to proceed with whatever the next thing I'm trying to do in my lines of business without waiting and uh, waiting for folks to come in and 
create this behind the scene and then send it to me in a report or some sort of a, a document to read over. Right? Uh, <clears throat> the next slide, uh, I'll talk a little bit on, on, uh, on how this all uh, works, right? So if you look at uh, some of these, um, yeah, I mean, uh, from a reference architecture, uh, if you will, uh, again, you're talking about uh, bringing data from all kinds of sources. Uh, again, we talk about uh, your, your core systems, uh, applications, enterprise applications, data lakes, Excel sheets, XML documents. Uh, also, it has all kinds of uh, connectivity and for, for web services and APIs. Being able to tap into that and automatically extract uh, the metadata layer from each one of those sources and then process that, right? then provide all the governance and all the uh, uh, yeah, I mean policies and all the cleansing and all the uh, management that you need from a governance standpoint on top of it before you, it can be consumed by the end user. Uh, obviously, it's, it can be deployed in AWS, it's deployable in Azure as well, and it provides you with a lot, number of APIs to be able to consume it from your applications or from any other uh, interfaces that you may be uh, using. On the uh, data virtualization side of things, uh, this is really, again, we mentioned that pre uh, previous, in previous slide, this is really an answer to the uh, limitation that we've kind of hit with the, the way we're doing uh, data integration today. Uh, basically moving data from all kinds of sources, consolidate it and put it in a centralized place before I can run my analytics queries, before I can run my uh, algorithms to uh, mine this data. With uh, DV or data virtualization, it becomes you know, so much uh, easier and so much faster uh, to do this without uh, undertaking, without uh, you know, uh, paying high cost uh, for, before I can actually leverage uh, the underneath uh, data. So in the next slide, it shows you, you know, how the, that data virtualization kind of sits in the middle, right? So it becomes a single point of access for all your data. So in terms of you know, being able to find, understand, secure, and consume data in one place, uh, combining data sources both on-prem and in the cloud, uh, delivering business uh, data views to all your consumers and reduce data replication and movement. This is very uh, especially important if you read the second point here. Uh, obviously now that you know, a lot of companies um, have this hybrid deployment, uh, some of their uh, workload is being pushed out to the cloud, uh, some of their core applications and core capabilities still sit on premise. Um, any innovative solution that's going to require the data from both sides uh, of the equation. And uh, having this uh, kind of straddle between the two and being able to provide you with the data uh, access, uh, aggregated view from data sources on the cloud, on prem, and even on the prem across all these different applications is very, very helpful, very, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, critical capability that uh, all our enterprise needs to do to be able to innovate, to be able to uh, yani, uh, uh, act at the speed of uh, business in terms of providing uh, data solutions. Um, there is a lot of, uh, in the next slide, it just shows you the kind of um, uh, sources that you can tap into immediately out of the box. You can tap into all these different, obviously, package solutions, but also all kinds of uh, streaming from uh, social media, all kinds of streaming from data sources, uh, marketplace, uh, uh, as well as the classical you know, data sources that you have within the enterprise. All these connectors or plugins uh, are readily available out of the box with uh, our uh, with Tipco's data virtualization offering. And uh, the good news is if you have a data source that's not covered in this 350 uh, or plus connectors, there's always ways to do it through uh, APIs and through an integration layer using the TIPCO integration uh, underneath. If you look at uh, Citibank, so kind of this is kind of brings it all together and the Citibank experience uh, in the next slide. Uh, Citibank is this well-known uh, uh, old customer of TIPCO and that partnership continues to grow in all, in all uh, areas. But specifically on the comes to data innovation, data management uh, and, and all that, the city embarked with Tipco uh, EBX uh, on a program. You know, if you talk about uh, city data nexus uh, team, and, uh, and and if you look at the objectives, um, you know, in the first column here, you know, being able to search all assets across uh, data catalog to identify opportunities, uh, reuse, and assets of interest. This is all assets for in the complete ecosystem of Citibank, right? 
uh, being able to uh, uh, browse data assets uh, hierarchies yeah, and understand dependencies, uh, lineage, impact, all these things, right? So to be able to do that, this is a massive yani, undertake when you consider the, you know, the, 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 the massive amount of data uh, that uh, Citibank uh, have. So with this partnership with the TIPCO, uh, definitely uh, they were able to improve the governance, uh, the management of its uh, data assets. Uh, again, while City, uh, with the, while City began with the data governance and reference data to start with, uh, data management, the initiative obviously evolved uh, over, over the years. So now we're talking about business uh, ma metadata management, we're talking about the data dictionaries, we're talking about reporting, master, uh, master and reference data management. It basically cross the whole nine yard of uh, your data management uh, layer. And uh, obviously this is a very uh, uh, complete use case, if you will, that's uh, been uh, used by uh, uh, TIPCO to enhance the feature set uh, and advance uh, the, the capabilities within the, the, uh, the Unify uh, offering. The next slide, I'm not gonna spend too much on it. It's, it's the architecture of what the key components are and how all these things gonna come together. Uh, if you're interested, just uh, drop me a line and we can definitely uh, spend some time on, on it. I wanna use the remaining few minutes uh, allowed to cover the next uh, few slides. So when you talk about uh, data science, right? This is really, again, where Robert meets the road, where uh, now a whole intelligence uh, comes into play. So uh, it, it, the way TIPCO looks at this uh, is really a team sport, right? So data scientists, uh, citizen data scientists, data engineers, business users, developers uh, need that flexible, extensible tools and, and promote that collaboration and automation and reuse of analytics workflow, right? Um, Algorithm itself is a key uh, uh, component, if you will, in this whole equation, but it's not everything. It's, it's also how do you deliver predictive uh, insights, uh, companies who keep focus on deployment, on management, on monitoring, uh, and also of, of their analytics models, but also smart buildings rely on the support of an end-to-end analytics lifecycle, right? While providing the enterprise security and, and uh, governance. So with this PREDICT offering uh, that we're talking about here, uh, organizations innovate uh, and solve complex uh, problems faster uh, to ensure predictive findings quickly uh, turn into uh, optimal outcomes. It, it, you know, the use cases are endless. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of people think of fraud and predictive maintenance and, uh, you know, next best, best offer for your customers when you think about these uh, yani data science driven uh, type of use cases. In the next slide, uh, you know, we'll cover, uh, you know, how um, this modern enterprise, again, tap the power of data for better insights. That's really, uh, you know, the line that kind of keeps this whole conversation uh, under one banner, if you will. Um, the idea is here insights, uh, faster uh, actions, and act in before uh, in or before the business moment, uh, meaning that you can actually predict the next best thing for for your business and being able to uh, act upon that. Um, the, with analytics, companies can can uh, predict uh, with confidence. Right. Um, if for example, we start with talking about delivering proactive customer uh, service, right, um, being able to delight your your customers again at the right moment. Uh, regardless of what uh, you know their uh, experience has been whether it's negative or positive and and and, and try to mitigate uh, issues and capitalize on, on opportunities if it was a positive experience right cross selling and upsetting and things like that um, uh, real time uh, you know uh, real time prediction of uh, equipment failures you know being able uh, you know we work with some of the largest uh, oil and gas operators very asset centric uh, operations right uh, drill bits costing uh, you know millions of dollars uh, they cannot uh, stop uh, drilling uh, that cost them you know uh, you know a big buck so being able to predict uh, when is the right time the perfect time of bringing things offline and doing this uh, predictive maintenance is crucial is crucial for the sustainability of the business, but it's also crucial for uh, making sure that we're optimizing uh, our operation. 
when you talk about uh, uh, optimized uh, pricing, especially in the retail and in the insurance uh, business, uh, being able to prevent fraud and risk management in the, in the uh, financial services, uh, being able to predict uh, uh, disruptions, especially in the travel and, and the airline business. Uh, we're not talking about COVID-19 complete lockdown, but we're talking about you know, things like, okay, we have a storm coming in, uh, we have you know, one of the runways is, is being blocked, you know, things like that. Uh, and being able to uh, shuffle things, cancellation of flights and rebooking and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of interesting use cases on how TIPCO has been used uh, at the, you know, by the largest uh, airliners, Delta, Emirates Airline, Lufthansa and others, and how to manage uh, disruptions uh, using this connected intelligence platform that we're sharing with you today. Under the, under the hood, uh, this predict uh, portfolio, again, um, if we go to the next slide, it will show you that uh, and it has, again, these three uh, buckets, if you will, of capabilities, visual analytics. Spotfire is very well known uh, globally now and across all the verticals um, that to be the uh, de facto standard for advanced uh, uh, advanced uh, uh, and visual analytics tool. Um, and uh, TIPCO is, is obviously gaining a lot of momentum in the market uh, against competition uh, because of the uh, breadth and width of feature set available in this platform uh, compared to what's available in, in, the, in the market uh, today. If you look at the data science uh, offering with the ROML uh, explainability of, uh, you know, uh, when you run your, your, your algorithm and you run your model and you look at the uh, models generated and the, the data set that it generates and how you go and actually drill down and explain the different result set and then you increase the accuracy and retrain that model. This is very powerful stuff that you can get uh, from the uh, platform with a, with a click of a button. We're not talking about building machine learning models from scratch. The tool is actually smart enough to look at the data set that, that you are trying to operate on, right? And uh, it's basically gleaning all these different relationships and references and all that and build uh, a workflow for you or a, a, you know, a machine learning workflow that you can obviously go in and, and customize and tailor uh, based on your uh, needs. And then finally, you talk about streaming analytics uh, being a key component of this predict uh, offering. If you look at the next slide, it's, it also shows you that uh, it's all about simplifying the complexity. You know, uh, we talk about rocket science and, 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 and data science, right? Uh, kind of <laughs> um, from a complexity level standpoint. Um, so data science tools like cloud services, uh, frameworks and open sources technologies like Python and R and and, uh, are very complex and overwhelming, uh, to be honest with you. I'm not a data scientist, I've dabbled with it a little bit, but it's a very complex uh, undertaking. So they need, they need this uh, platform to simplify uh, data science machine learning uh, across hybrid uh, uh, ecosystem, using uh, tens, uh, TensorFlow, for example, using SageMaker, using uh, recognition, uh, cognitive services, whatever you prefer tool, uh, from an open source community standpoint, we've been able to build these models, bring it into uh, the TIPCO platform and run it as is, right? And, and not just run it, run it, manage it, uh, build the whole governance uh, around it, uh, basically building what we call a database, uh, I'm sorry, a data science uh, operating uh, model, or data, uh, data science ops, right? So that whole end-to-end -end, uh, AI solution is really what TIPCO uh, is is uh, well known for, and that's the key, uh, you know, differentiating factor that uh, we bring to the table. Develop end-to-end -end AI solution using very uh, centralized, uh, common interfaces, and then finally, uh, data science for everyone. Uh, you're talking about the ability that you know we talk about uh, citizen data scientists, right? Uh, by basically combining that AutoML intuitive drag and drop workflows, you know, using the the studios, and I'm sure there's tons of uh, uh, demos that you can actually uh, search for uh, on, on uh, social media, you can go in and see how easy it is to build the, the, those models without really knowing a whole lot about how to build those from scratch. 
And in uh, the next one, in the next slide, it kind of shows a little bit again of how uh, this works from a deployment and a deployment architecture uh, standpoint. I, again, there is, there is all of these capabilities kind of coming together or what we call it, you know, better together, right? When you bring all these capabilities together, that's when, when uh, things make more, more sense. If you look at how, for example, um, um, Rome Airport, I've been using this uh, platform in the next slide. <clears throat> so Rome, Rome Airports is, uh, you know, um, this is pre-COVID. Um, uh, it was voted uh, one of the best uh, airports in, in, from a customer experience standpoint uh, in, in, in Europe. This came at the tail end of uh, many, many years of being uh, the least favorite airport, right? Or the uh, worst uh, customer experience that you can have in, a, in, a, in an airport. And uh, if you talk to the leaders in the Rome Airport, they attribute to that huge jump in their uh, NPS score and in the customer experience to tapping into their data and leveraging the right tool, leveraging the right technology, and focusing and putting their customers obviously front and center and focusing their operations around enhancing uh, customer experience. So with the, this platform in place, they were able to avoid long lines, uh, reducing you know, uh, cancellations and missing flights uh, for the customers as they go through the different uh, stages or different steps before they can onboard uh, a plane. Uh, the whole optimization of evaluation. So we talk about passenger uh, journey from the time you land or you walk into the airport till you land till you take off and, and then your inbound flight from the time you land till the time you exit the airport. That whole uh, customer experience is fully automated, uh, fully tracked, uh, fully uh, managed through this uh, connected intelligence platform, uh, typical. Obviously providing huge, huge you know, uh, differentiating values for the management and the operation managers on the floor uh, from an executive side of things and how uh, now they can also take it to the next level by improving security, improving the whole ecosystem and operations within the, the airport. Uh, again, this is very public uh, use case with a lot of uh, media and, and social media that talks in details of how this, uh, this was done. Uh, in the next slide, um, this is a classical uh, you know, data science uh, case where uh, AA in Ireland was uh, having huge you know, uh, uh, setbacks when it comes to competing with the startups in the insurance business. Uh, simply one of, one of the reasons was the lack of ability to be able to respond to customers quickly, right? Uh, you ask for a quote, you have a car, you need health insurance, you need home insurance, you need car insurance. Uh, to be able to get a quote from uh, AA or AA, you know, previously, it, was, uh, it takes a long time, right? You have to give them all these data, they have to go in and crunch all the numbers, run through risk uh, models, run through their all the uh, you know, different uh, steps that they have to go through, and they'll come to you two, three, four days later with a quote. Uh, you know, with TIPCO, they were able to automate all this, uh, including the risk, uh, risk factors, uh, detecting fraud, uh, dynamic pricing, all this heavily depends on the crunching massive amount of data, crunching numbers together, and ultimately uh, giving the best code that's uh, suitable to the customer, but also protecting uh, the best interests of this uh, insurance company and making sure it stays uh, profitable. So, I mean, there's so many uh, intuitive and so many creative and innovative use cases uh, for this platform. And in the next slide, I will uh, also talk briefly about uh, Hunt Oil Company. This is a very common use cases that many of our oil and gas uh, companies are, 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 are using uh, our technology for, uh, specifically around digital twins, right? So we're talking about how do I <clears throat> simulate all the data coming from uh, an oil field and build this uh, simulation uh, platform, if you will, that allows me to experiment, uh, yani change different uh, parameters in the way I run my shifts, in the way I run my uh, drilling operations uh, and see what the impact would be without actually having it and going and doing it physically uh, in the field, right? So 
obviously, you know, predictive maintenance is, is, is a key uh, uh, you know, benefit from this, but also it helps you optimize how the crew is working, how the whole production uh, related to operations is optimized, how you're managing health and safety, increasing you know, uh, um, the utilization and, and the productivity of your resources, human resources and asset resources as well. All of that using, again, massive amount of data feeding into this uh, connected intelligence platform, sifting through all the data and building the, these uh, models that gives you the insight on how best to do, to do this uh, across all these different uh, functions. At the end, you know, I'd, uh, you know, just share with you that you don't have, if you're you know, to embark on any of these activities with us, um, what we bring in to you from uh, day one is a bunch of accelerators. So in the next slide, I'll show you, you know, some of these uh, readily available uh, accelerators that you can actually use uh, immediately with, with our platform. So you don't really have to go in and figure out how do I build uh, an FX dealing accelerators, for example, or a risk management accelerator, or even a connected vehicle if you're in the Yani fleet management or in the logistics uh, space and you've got the fleet and you want to have a connected uh, vehicle uh, application uh, to manage your fleet. We bring it to you with the accelerator, with the templates, with the code base to jumpstart your uh, experience on how to leverage this to, again, tap into your data in a more meaningful way, but also uh, with very quick uh, win where you can able to show the, the, the business what this technology is able to do for you. Uh, I think with that, <clears throat> I'm going to stop here um, and uh, hopefully I'll we'll just leave a few minutes for, um, you know, Q&A. Hi, yes, thank you very That's much, Roger. Okay. Right, so ladies and gentlemen, um, we have gone uh, slightly over time. Uh, I just do have some questions at hand here. So I just want to put that forward. For those who still want to ask questions, you are most welcome to um, ask those questions uh, in the email that will be provided to you in the chat box, uh, which will be ruddy at uh, bahwancybertech.com. So you can pose any additional questions to ruddy at bahwancybertech.com. You will find it coming up in the chat box in a moment. Um, in the meantime, Roddy, I do have uh, uh, some questions that need to be answered. Uh, the first one is, are the three capabilities of connect, unify, and predict sold as a whole, or is there a further breakdown to individual components? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Obviously, it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, a, a suite of uh, uh, products that kind of, kind of come together. So, um, you know, in terms of uh, how is it bundled and how is it packaged, it's, uh, it's uh, definitely, um, it can be flexible, right? In most cases, a lot of customers will pick uh, and start their journey with, uh, the, let's say, the integration and, or the uh, unify and then find it to predict. Or it depends on the use cases also of what you need. You can bring the whole platform or, again, bits and pieces of the platform. The licensing structure, of this, the way we sell this, is depends on the need of the customer. So it can be as granular as individual components, or it can be bundles. It depends on the use case, let's say a portion of that full platform, or the complete uh, full-fledged uh, offering, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. We have another question here um, uh, requested from Suhail. How is TIPCO positioned against PTC's IoT platform? Yeah, I mean, TIPCO, um, in terms of uh, competitive uh, yeah, any analysis, we're happy to share with you specific details, but uh, without mentioning uh, uh, specific uh, competition, competition or competitor in this case, uh, TIPCO have invested yeah, any, uh, massively in the IoT uh, and IoT integration uh, in the recent years. And as a matter of fact, it has built a complete community, uh, working obviously with manufacturers, working with the larger you know, uh, community, building uh, even uh, uh, open source uh, projects. You know, I mentioned the project Flogo. Uh, it's really a very uh, powerful uh, platform. Again, like I mentioned earlier, that allows you to take this uh, uh, business uh, intelligence whether it's in the form of a machine learning uh, model or if it's a, a, you know, a business rule 
uh, model and being able to deploy that and run it on these uh, devices, right? So Flogo is, is, is really, uh, it's, it's gaining a lot of steam, a lot of momentum in the market. It's being looked at as a, a standard for a lot of uh, use cases, especially when it comes to uh, renewable energy, especially when it comes to connected vehicle uh, type of, uh, and also in the, in the asset centric uh, operations, such as you know, the logistics and also the uh, oil and gas. So it depends on, on a specific use case that you have uh, in mind, uh, Suhail. We'd love to come and share with you some details on how a typical offering can uh, um, outshine or provides you a richer feature set uh, from a competition, regarding, uh, regardless of who that competition is. If you have already a platform uh, that you already have in-house and you'd like to see how typical can make it better, that's another uh, take that we can definitely help, help you with. We can come in and do some, some uh, POC and some uh, you know, uh, analysis, some workshop uh, to help you make the right decision for your business. Thank you, Roddy. Another question that has come through from Mr. Mishra. Uh, you mentioned IoT and devices as data source. How does TIPCO's connected intelligence source data from these devices? Sure. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of interest in IoT today. So definitely, uh, you know, Tibco is very well known in the integration. So in, in terms of being able to connect and collect uh, data from any source, whether it's IoT or otherwise, uh, Tibco has, has been you know, on the front uh, leading uh, you know, a lot of innovation, a lot of uh, uh, capabilities have been built in their hybrid integration uh, platform. So again, working with manufacturing is one, in, is one angle. You know, we're working with Hitachi of the world and the Siemens of the world and others, right? And how to uh, allow the uh, KPIs and the metrics that are being captured with the sensors and devices uh, and feed, feed that through either MQTT uh, adapters or through, um, you know, other, our IoT gateway. There's all kinds of you know, methods and, and ways to do it. We're also through our streaming and our streaming uh, analytics uh, offering, we're able to again uh, automatically connect through a bunch of adapters, through a bunch of, uh, and being able to retrieve that. In a lot of cases, devices also, they have their, you know, from the manufacturing, they will have their own uh, gateways to allow for interoperability and integration with the rest of the enterprise. We can also tap uh, into that. Thank you. We only have time for one more question. Uh, and the following question is, are COVID-19 analytics projects and SmartWorks 360 shown as products that can be licensed or solutions to be further customized and implemented at the customer site? Yeah, absolutely. So there's, there's actually a couple uh, solutions that I've shown you in the, in the slide deck there. The first one is really a community uh, application. You can go in and, and use it. Uh, you can download the uh, artifacts for it, but obviously you need that uh, underlying uh, typical engine to to run it. So, so it's two things: it's the solution itself, but the, also the underlying engine uh, that you will need to actually uh, run that application. So it's a, it's a licensed solution, if you will. The other uh, solution that I spoke about, the SmartWorks 360, which is a BCT IP. Uh, this is a new offering that we have for our customers, and uh, definitely it's uh, it's a a product that we can uh, work with the customers depends on their need and use cases. Customize it, tailor it to their need uh, through a, some you know, licensing model that we can uh, work with, with uh, customers on. Uh, you know, it's, it's fully fledged uh, work, uh, work in the product with the feature set that I've shown um, yeah, out of the box and can be licensed as such. But if you need further customization and certain you know, enhancements to that, uh, that will be dive into more of a solutioning uh, side, which will also can be uh, worked out. Uh, depends on the use case. Excellent. Thank you very much, Roddy. Uh, that's all we have time for from the Q and A uh, session for now. As I mentioned before, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to send them directly to Roddy. Uh, on screen, you will see Roddy at bahonsybertech.com. He's happy to take those uh, additional questions and to connect one-on-one -on -one with you. Roddy, is there anything you'd like to say before I close the session? Again, many thanks uh, to, for joining us today and we look forward to hear from you. Explore how we can uh, partner with you and enable your organization, obviously, 
with the data-driven uh, innovations. Uh, we've got the technologies, we've got the best technologies, we've got the best people to deliver it uh, at uh, BCT, uh, BCT TIPCO uh, business unit. Please uh, take us up on this offer. Uh, let us hear from you, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we're more than happy to look deeper into some of those uh, use cases that some of, of, of a few folks have asked about. Happy to do some workshops, do some demos, so do some uh, POCs to explore how we can partner together and uh, make sure that you guys have you know, uh, uh, the capabilities that can definitely uh, transform the way you do things and uh, innovate with your data. Thank you very much, Roddy, for your time today and for sharing that uh, insightful presentation. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our session. Thank you for joining the Bahuan Cybertech TIPCO webinar today. And we certainly do look forward to sharing a number of very relevant and transformative topics with you in our upcoming webinar series throughout June, July and August. We will be sharing the recording of the session with you post uh, the webinar and we'll also be sending you a short survey. Once you exit the session, it will automatically be automated. Please do fill it in and let us know your thoughts on today's session with Mr. Roddy Alatawi. Until next time, stay safe and do stay well. Have a great afternoon. Thank you all.